and welcome to Connect Terra in Denver. I'm Jenna Dagenhart with Asset TV, and I'm joined now by David Johnston with Amwell Ridge Wealth Management. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. So David, let's talk about fee-for-service offerings. How do you leverage them in your business? Well, the fee-for-service offering, uh, we started about almost about a year ago putting that into place. And the biggest difference has been communicating to clients that financial planning and investment management are not synonymous. Uh, investment management is part of financial planning. And then from our standpoint, we need to be compensated appropriately for each one of those type of things. So communicating that to them and putting forth transparent and clear and easy to understand menu of services and compensation patterns and compensation I should say um, uh, choices uh, has, has been very good. And have there been any changes from implementation to now? Um, the only thing I'd say with implementation that has changed is that we now have the access to the uh, advice pay, uh, which is very nice because now not only can it be, I want these two or three different types of services and here's a one-time fee, but now actually we can, we've can we expanded our offerings to make it more subscription-based, if you will, uh, where here this is $200 a month, $300 a month, or whatever it might be. And it, and it doesn't have to be getting checks every month, but it could be either via ACH or, uh, or, or credit card. Uh, so that's made it much more um, user-friendly, if you will. And uh, how have the clients responded to the fee-for-service offerings, and has the response been different at all, depending on the different segments? It's been rather seamless, actually. Uh, I th the way that we've set it up is we have uh, in the menu of services, and clearly if you want to be an investment-only client, no worries, and here's the normal uh, scale or, or of services, uh, and typically it's you know, let's say a 1.25 and it goes down to one. And I always joke, I say, if you buy five suits at Macy's, it's cheaper than if you buy one. So the more money under management, the cheaper it gets. Mm -hmm. However, when you move into the financial planning area, um, we have, in, in this case, here's the 15 things that we can do for you. And it'll be whatever it might be, 200 hours a month based upon the different level. And we could do, as I mentioned, that could be electronically put in, all that kind of stuff. But maybe you don't need all these 15 things. Maybe you just need these two things. And then I'll joke and say, let's, let's pretend like we're at Panera Bread. Pick two, and here it is, it's $1,250, and that's how it works. And we've had many more of the pick twos um, than we've had of the subscription base, which is fine, uh, because candidly, from, my, from my, stand, my standpoint, as long as we're being compensated for the planning, in addition to the investments, I'm happy, the clients like it, um, and they also have more buy-in. If they're, if they're paying for it, they're more apt to get you the documents you need and to follow up and follow through and implement, so therefore it's helping themselves. Gotta love a good Panera, you pick two. Yeah, 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 that, it, it resonates, right? It's just using real terms and mm -hmm. it, works, it, it works well. Got a, good, a lot of good feedback from it. Yeah, and going off of that, what advice would you give to advisors who are looking to implement fee-for-service offerings and have there been any marketing or materials that have been especially useful for you all? Well, the advice, first of all, would be decouple the investment management and the financial planning. Uh, I know in today's kind of race to the bottom with, uh, with regard to pricing, but I think all of us today are willing to pay for quality. Um, so I think sometimes people might say, well, in order for me to justify how much money I'm, uh, my fee I'm charging on the investments under management, maybe I have to provide the planning for free. And I would really caution you against that. That is a very difficult, uh, slippery slope to go down. Uh, so decoupling those and, com and, and communicating it in a good way really works. We, we've, we developed a, a brochure that clearly, clearly articulates all the different menu services and how they're compensated, what the fees are. And then we've actually built it out on our website as well. It's more interactive. Who are you? Are you you a young professional, a young accumulator, a professional, pre-retiree, retiree, and then you can navigate and click through, and then um, it, it, it brings you down to ultimately, if you figure a like a pyramid, brings you down to where this is you, and here's what you typically need. If that's your profile, here's where, where's what the fees are, here's what you get. That's been really helpful. A lot of good feedback from it too. Uh, very customized, it sounds like. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not not the 25 year old needs something different than the 70 year old, and you have to have the places in between. Uh, and I will add on the young accumulator side, I mentioned the 25 year old is now, you know, I'm 46, but doing this now for 24 years. And I have a lot of clients now 
who have their kids who are in their 20s. And that's the next generation of wealth management for us. It provides continuity for the family, but 1% of no money is still no money. Mm -hmm. So, but they do need planning. So, and everything else in their life is subscription based, whether it be Netflix or the gym or whatever it might be. So now to have something that's $100 a month, whatever it may be, that's providing this baseline of financial planning is a nice entree into that next generation. Entrees, I'm getting hungry here, Panera, <laughs> all this talk of food. Thank you so much for joining us, Dave. You're welcome, thank you for having me, this was great.